We start things off in the El Paso County Courthouse in El Paso, Texas. All rise. Please be seated. The records reflect the attorneys for the state, the attorneys for the accused. The accused are present in the courtroom. The man you see here is 41-year-old Daniel Viegas, accused of killing two teens in 1993 when he was just 16. At that time, without an attorney or his parents present, Viegas says he was coerced by an El Paso detective into confessing to the murders. Despite recanting the confession hours later, it became a key piece of evidence for the prosecution. Mr. President, the courtroom, the court has received a message from the jury indicating that they've reached a verdict. Viegas has been on trial three separate times for this crime and has maintained his innocence throughout. Let's bring the jury in. His first trial in 1994 ended in a mistrial due to a hung jury. A 1995 retrial ended with a conviction for capital murder, and Viegas was sentenced to life in prison. After spending 18 years in prison, that verdict was thrown out in 2013 because of ineffective assistance of counsel. Viegas was released in January of 2014 and has remained out on bond as he awaited a third trial. During that time, he fathered two children. Though the prosecution continued to insist on his guilt, there was no DNA, no firearm, and no forensic evidence presented linking Viegas to the shooting. If the defendant will please stand. The last 25 years of his life, much of it in prison, has all led up to this moment. In the District Court of El Paso County, Texas, 409th Judicial District, the state of Texas versus Daniel Villegas, number 940D09328. Verdict form B, we, the jury, find the defendant, Daniel Villegas, not guilty of... For the first time since he was 16 years old, 25 years ago, Daniel Villegas is a free man. Mr. Villegas, you have been under many conditions uh, in this court. You are no longer under any conditions in this court. You are free to leave. Good luck to you. We're now in Washtenaw County Trial Court in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Your Honor, my client and I have reviewed the pre-sentence report in this matter. We don't find any factual errors. This is 17-year-old Donta Wright. Wright's in court today to receive his sentence for the shooting death of high school student Jordan Klee. He's pled guilty to armed robbery, conspiracy to commit armed robbery, a felony firearm violation, and second-degree murder. As part of the sentencing, a family member makes a victim impact statement on behalf of the victim's mother, who's too overcome with emotion to speak. I sincerely hope that whatever it was you wanted so badly that you felt the need to murder my son was worth the next at least 52 years of your continued existence. You won't get the luxury of raising your child because you took mine away. Wright's demeanor during this statement is not what you might expect. Your actions have led you to a prison cell but have also created an empty cell that I live in every day. While you can still hope to be released one day, I'll never escape <clears throat> my help. You are still alive, but Jordan has no future. Thank you, Your Honor. We're done. Wright and his attorney approach the podium. Right. Your Honor, my client wants to address the court. Oh, of course. Yeah. Yes, sir. Mr. Wright, what would you like to say? I just want to tell y'all. I'll be home soon. I'll be Keon. I love my family. That's all you got to say. That opportunity could have been used to show remorse to the court for his actions. It wasn't. You know, I have um, never in 23 years, approximately, ever not accepted a sentence agreement between the parties because it's a bargain for sentence by the parties. But watching you sit there, smile and laugh and shake your head like this was no big deal 
I'm very tempted to just say, I'm not going to accept this sentence agreement. We'll go to trial. And if you're convicted of felony murder, you'll go to prison for the rest of your life. That means you'll die there. That's what I'm tempted to do. The judge does have the authority to reject the plea deal. Mr. Bella, do you want me to accept this sentence agreement? Your Honor, before I answer the court's question, I would like an opportunity to discuss it with the victim's family. Okay. If the court would pass it, I would appreciate it. I'd be happy it. to do that. We'll pass this matter. It's now up to the prosecution to decide whether or not to dismiss the agreement and pursue a trial. Um, I have had a very lengthy discussion uh, with the victim's mother as well as his grandparents and some family members. Uh, they understand that obviously this, this is the defendant who uh, brutally uh, murdered their son by shooting him in the back of the head. He's shown absolutely no remorse. However, the Glee family um, does want to move on with this. They want to get some closure from this case. And they want to try and forgive this defendant and all of his actions uh, for what he did. And they are asking, as well as the people, uh, that you proceed with the sentence. Okay. Wright has another opportunity to address the court, this time through his attorney. Your Honor, my client asked me to apologize to the court. His smiling was in no way meant as disrespectful either to the family, to the victim, or to this court. My client is 17 years old. He has some emotional problems and, frankly, was scared. And some people display fear by smiling. He really meant no disrespect. He does take this very seriously, and I think he does feel bad about it. The judge accepts the sentencing agreement, which puts him behind bars for 25 to 52 years. Next, we head to Jefferson County Circuit Court in Louisville, Kentucky. We are on the record, Commonwealth versus Rayton Woodford. Allegation, which it is quite serious. This is 29-year-old Rayton Woodford. He's in the courtroom today for a probation revocation hearing. He'd previously been sentenced to probation for drugs and weapons charges, but violated the terms. Discovery. Sitting a few feet away is Woodford's girlfriend. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be truthful? During Woodford's hearing, a detective provides testimony. Uh, that evening, he was charged with the handgun and uh, narcotics. Um, and if you know, was Mr. Woodford at the time a convicted felon? Uh, yes, he was. Once the testimony concludes, the camera, controlled by Judge Barry Willett, remains locked on the empty witness chair as the judge announces his decision. Probation revoked in its entirety. Mr. Woodford, I'm going to send you to serve five years. Good luck to you. <laughs> Flash across the screen was Woodford making a run for it. Woodford's girlfriend can be heard pleading with her boyfriend to stop. Go with me, please. The record will reflect that Mr. Woodford made an unsuccessful effort to escape. Woodford is stopped by deputies. He's brought back into the courtroom now and taken into custody. Do not pull my Woodford's girlfriend's upset about her treatment by deputies as she was caught up in the tussle to stop Woodford from escaping. Well, that's a first in 19 years on the bench. <coughs> she did tackle him on the way out. Are you okay? A short while later, Woodford's girlfriend requests permission to address the judge about what happened to her. We're back on the re record in the Woodford case, and Mr. Woodford's girlfriend would like to talk to the court. I didn't do anything. I tried to stop him. I, didn't I noticed that. I There's noticed no that. reason for him to have to hit me. Woodford's girlfriend's pointing to a sheriff's deputy who helped prevent Woodford's escape. And in doing so, allegedly had to pull her out of the fray. She did not, I didn't pose any kind of threat to anybody in here. We did that. I tried to stop him. What I saw was that Mr. Woodford made an unsuccessful attempt to escape the courtroom, and he was apprehended by law enforcement. But that's, I got her. I, I okay. understand that. Okay. I tried to stop okay. that, but there's no reason for that man to have to put my foot on my heart or push me. Okay. 
But you condoning that, right? I'm not condoning any. No, wait a minute. Come back up here right now. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Don't you tell me I'm condoning anything. I just told you what I observed. You made an effort to stop him from leaving. I appreciate yeah. that. But in the thick of it, when your boyfriend is fighting with deputies, people might get pushed out of the way. Maybe it was for your own safety. He was going to hurt somebody. So don't tell me I'm condoning anything. I did not say that. <laughs> Anything else you'd like to say to me? No, sir. Thank you. She leaves the courtroom and is not charged. Rayton Woodford begins serving a five-year sentence in a Kentucky prison. He now faces an additional charge of second-degree escape. We're in the Cherokee County Magistrate Court in Gaffney, South Carolina. This is 25-year-old Joshua Mosley. He's being formally charged with the murder of Drenika Hopper. Hopper was found unresponsive in a Gaffney home with a gunshot wound to the head. The two were acquaintances, and Mosley's believed to have been in the home with Hopper before the shooting occurred. Uh, if everybody would be in favor, uh, the victim's family is here as well as our members. I'd like you to stand up this time, Your Honor. Yes, sir. Family stand up. Family members and loved ones of Drenika filled the courtroom for Mosley's hearing. In an unusual proceeding, the judge is allowing them to address the defendant directly. In your mind, she may have not meant much to you. She meant so much to us. Um, it's not even words can explain, like, what you took from our family. I just want to know why. Why? Who gave you power? Who put it in your hand that you could just take another person's life? You hurt my family. And you just took my sister like. Like, it don't mean nothing to nobody. Like, that's yours. Like, you ain't had no choice. Like, you in control of life and death. You ain't got no control of karma. Consequences. There are consequences. And now Mosley requests the opportunity to respond. Are you willing to waive your right to remain silent? Yes, sir. Are, are you under the influence of drugs or alcohol or anything? All right, sir. If you would please stand in the corner. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm not gonna cry like this for anybody. My mama has cancer. She's, she, I'm locked up for two years right now. I can't do anything for my mama. And if Nika was here, she would tell everyone you that I did nothing wrong. I did not harm Nika. I made mistakes. Me and Nika, we both made mistakes. We made mistakes. We were on the drugs. We I did not harm me. I want that very clear. I did not harm me. My lawyer told me, do not come in here and make a statement when the time comes because it can't be used against me. I'm going to kill you. It's hell again. I don't care about the prison time. I want everybody to know the truth. I did not harm me. I never, we never, we weren't arguing. We had no reason to be mad at each other. We had no reason to want to harm each other. She was playing with the gun. I don't know why she put it to her head. She made a mistake. She accidentally shot herself dead. I promise you that's what I want. You quit saying that. I'm telling you. She loves life. 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 Thanks for being a fan of CourtCam. Subscribe to A&E to never miss a new video and catch full episodes on AETV.com.